Hi divers, Alec Pierce again from Scuba 2000 with another tech tip. Now this is probably going to be one of the last tech tips of, the, of this series three. I'm not exactly sure. I have, in fact, I have no idea how Kevin organizes this, but anyway, he tells me that we're taking a couple of months off. Uh, we're going to emphasize our new playlist, which is Vintage Scuba and Sea Hunt's coming and, uh, and your local dive store as well. We're going to try to give you some ideas on, on what a good dive store should look like, what you should expect from your dive store. Anyway, that's all coming. So anyway, today we're going to do a tech tip. Uh, first or last, it doesn't matter. I like to think that you're getting some ideas from these tech tips that might help you make your diving easier, a little more fun. As a matter of fact, this particular, this particular, particular tech tip, you see, I do make bloopers. This particular tech tip was suggested by one of our readers, and I thank you very much. I'm sorry I've forgotten your name. I, I answer so many emails every day and so many, uh, so many uh, answers on uh, questions on YouTube. I really, really enjoy that, actually, and that's a lot of fun. And this tech tip uh, was actually suggested by one of you folks, uh, and I've expanded it very slightly. Uh, sorry, I'll get to uh, the, the reader's part in just a moment to cover regulator storage in general. So you have your regulator. And, um, and you just had it serviced. That's the best time to store it is just after service, not after you come back from your dive down south. Because when you come back from your dive down south, no matter how fastidious, careful you've been, there's almost certainly going to be some sand or some salt somewhere in the first or second somewhere. And you don't want that to sit on the regulator for long periods of time. So the best thing to do, generally speaking, is to have your regulator serviced after your dive trip and then store it carefully until your next trip. And then you know it's all ready to go. You might want to take it out, maybe go to your local dive store, if it's a good local dive store, and they will allow you to use the pool for a, just a quick check to make sure everything's working properly, your mask and snorkel fins, rigging and so on, and then off you go on your trip. When you come back from your trip, uh, assuming it's uh, salt water, or even fresh water too, and you get it serviced, now you want to store it for a good long time. How do you do that? How do you properly service, uh, how do you properly store a, uh, a regulator. Well, it's not that complicated, really. You probably already know the answer, but let me just share a couple of ideas with you. Then we're going to get to my to to, the, to uh, one of the uh, readers' uh, uh, interesting kind of interesting questions. Here's a typical regulator from today: first stage, uh, safe second, uh, primary, and then uh, of course you have your low pressure inflator for the BC, and uh, in this case, an air integrated uh, gauge on it. So this is a pretty typical regulator. It's just been serviced. I know it's just been serviced because I just serviced it. So now you've been sure that the dust cap is in good uh, in good shape and and you've ensured that uh, that the regulators are all working properly. Everything is great. It just came back from service. Of course, it's bone dry. If you're not entirely sure of that, simply hang it up in the basement or somewhere for a day or two until you know it's bone dry. So now what do you do? Well, the best thing to do is to seal this somehow in a plastic bag. So go out of your way and find some uh, large freezer bags. You need to get them pretty big. We use 13 by 18 inches, 13 by 18 inches. They're pretty big bags and fairly heavy bags too, at least four millimeter, quite heavy, like a freezer bag, a Ziploc. And then what you do is you coil this regulator up and just watch what I do. This is the hardest part of the whole thing, but I, I do this a lot. So you see how compact you can make the regulator with a little bit of practice. You can get it all in there nice and small, makes a nice small package, and then get it into one of those freezer bags. I'm going to set this over here, and I'm going to show you a regulator and a freezer bag. There it is, all sealed up. Regulator, safe second, primary LP hose, and this has a long console, all sealed up in this heavy, heavy material freezer type uh, um, uh, Ziploc bag, and zipped short. In fact, what we do here at Scuba 2000 is we actually suck the air out of them a little bit. It's kind of neat. You can't really evacuate them completely, but if you suck the air out like this, because it's air that's hard on the rubber, and it's air that causes corrosion if there's any salt or anything else in there. So do that, and then put it away carefully, out of the sun, someplace cool, preferably don't store it beside the furnace, and you're regular when you take it out, whether it's in uh, two months or six months or a year, it'll come out fresh and new and ready to go diving. So that's the best way to store your regular. Some people hang them up, not a bad idea, but for long-term storage, this is probably the best. Okay, now, what I want to share with you, however, is a really interesting uh, a comment and, and a question that came from one of our readers. One of our readers had read somewhere that if <clears throat> the second stage purge button is depressed, it takes the pressure off the second stage spring and the rubber seat. And by keeping the pressure off the rubber seat, that rubber seat doesn't get a permanent set on it. 
because it's quite true. The spring is always pushing on that little thin rubber seat, and it continues to push and push and push and push. Eventually, it'll make a permanent indentation, and the regulator will start to free flow when you hook it back up to a tank. And he was wondering whether or not it was a good idea, from what he had read, to keep this purge button depressed slightly. In fact, he sent me a picture, and uh, he, he had devised a pretty neat system, which a little pill bottle, which he set on top of the purge button, and then he strapped it with two elastic bands. And the pill bottle was just pushed down the, the purge button very slightly, relieved the pressure of the spring in that seat, so the regulator of the second stage was in perfect condition when he took it off to go diving whether it's in three months or a year, doesn't matter. It is a good idea, and I told him this when I replied, it's a great idea. I have not seen this question come up in a long time. Now, to illustrate that it's a good idea, if it's possible, it's not critical, folks, it's not really critical, but if you're gonna store your rig for a long, long time, a year, say, you know, eight, 10 months, a year or more, then it might be worthwhile doing that. Otherwise, when you put the regulator on the tank, it may well free flow. To illustrate, and I mentioned this to my reader, that that's a good idea, I've, I've got together two or three commercially available big brand name regulars that do exactly that. Absolutely. Now, you've all heard of Scuba Pro, a very, very well known name, make high quality regulators. Scuba Pro was one of the first to use this second stage spring relief system. That's what it's called, second stage spring relief system. And they did it a couple of ways. They actually have a special little tool. You can see right on here is a little tool with the Scuba Pro S on it, and it says remove for use, you, know, you take that off before you go diving with it. But this goes into some of their model regulators and turns, and it takes the pressure off. They also had a system with some of their earlier regulators. You can see the perch button here is quite open on this model. And they had a, a blue paddle, I call it a paddle. It's about three inches long and an inch wide, nice and smooth, and you just push it in and it pushes down on the perch button like this, watch, with this little, it's a toothbrush, see that? And you see how it holds that second stage purge button pushed down. It takes the pressure off the spring. I was unable to find my blue paddle. I know I have some. This is quite old, 25 years old. Uh, but this works in its place, and it's a suggestion for you. If you take an old toothbrush or something small and smooth and cut it to fit, slide it in there to hold the purge button now, that will help. There you go. That's Scuba Pro system. Now, here's Decor's system. This is pretty neat. Decor no longer with us, unfortunately, but one of the biggest and one of the most popular companies, scuba companies ever in existence, and this is one of their fine regulators, Decor 400 from many, many years ago. Beautiful regulator, all chromes, you know it's old. Their later models were, were plastic, like ours today. But this is a typical second stage. But they came with this clip right here, and this clip was, was designed to go over the regulators. And it says, remove for diving, purge button depressor. Look at that, they actually have a name for it. PBD. What's PBD, Kevin? Oh, purge button depressor. Absolutely. And it was simple. This is not like the reader. If you're watching this, I hope you are. This is just like yours. A little more sophisticated. Watch. You see that? And it's very slightly pushing down on the purge button and taking the pressure off of that spring and pressure off of that seat. Look at that. Same as you've designed yourself. Fantastic. Later models of Decor came out like this. They got rid of that clip because people were losing the clip. Like I lost my blue purge uh, bl blue uh, uh, scuba bro button, divers would lose this decor clip. Look at here. Here's a decor second stage, later model, cycle plastic if you like, so you know it's later and newer. Watch this. You push on the purge button slightly, so then this black clip over here, slide it over, and it holds the purge button down. So there's a purge button depressor, or second stage spring relief, whatever you want to call it, built into the regulator. How about that? Pretty slick, huh? And when you press on the purge button, pull this back, you're ready to go diving. Just that simple. Another company, Sherwood, still with us, great company, been around for many, many, many years. And they have a similar system. In some ways, it's actually a little bit neater. Same type of thing. Watch. Push the purge button down on the second stage. There's a little button on the side. See, push it in. Let go. Let go. And you can see the purge button is now partially depressed takes the pressure off that spring and seat. This is kind of neat because now when you go diving, you just press the button, the spring pops out, and you're all set to go. You don't have to do anything. See that? Pretty slick, huh? So, thanks very much, reader, for bringing that up. Gave me an opportunity to share this tech tip on regulator storage and, and uh, this information about second stages, about the spring leaf, and uh, your idea was pretty neat. Maybe with some of these ideas, you can make it a little more sophisticated. Maybe put it on the market. Maybe other divers would want to have that. It's, it's not a bad idea.
Anyway, thank you very much for all your comments. I think this is the last of our tech, 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 tech tips for this, uh, this season, for this episode. We're going to take a couple of months off, work with Vintage Scuba and Sea Hunt, a local dive store. I hope you watch those as well. It's been a lot of fun, and we'll talk to you again really soon. Alec Pierce, Scuba 2000.